magnet. Apparently, it really so. is. Yeah. Apparently so. Now it got me a flavor saver. It can, a beer can take a man from a six to a nine. Message. <laughs> speaking of sixty nine. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, speaking of six nine. Lil Gotti is going after six nine. Lil got it. Lil got it. Oh, uh, Lil got. Wait, y'all saying got one? Y'all say got, got one? Y'all saying got it? Got it? Got it? it. What I say? Gotti? Yeah. Lil got it is going after six nine. After Takashi disrespected Lil Key. And then I can't see the right side. Lil Got It posted an Instagram story calling out the infamous rainbow haired rapper after 6ix9ine had disrespected Keed while going after Gunna for allegedly snitching. Keed died at 24 in May of this year. Rest in paradise. He was really dope. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, keep that shit toward Gunna, bro. Got It began in his video. Don't put my, my brother name in this shit. You tripping. I don't give a fuck about none of that. What y'all got going on? I'm going to tell you, I ain't playing on my brother. I don't care about no security. I don't care about none of that. <laughs> Let's be honest, bro. At, at what point are people going to stop acknowledging this guy? Like, the worst thing you could do with 6 9 is bring him any relevance and acknowledge him. Like, I mean, but you got to be fair, though. If somebody got snitching rumors and it's gonna, this is the time to pop out. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, trying to, he, it's, it's clear as day that 6 9 wants to, you know, from day one, he's been saying, "This everybody ain't street, everybody ain't this. So when situations come out where it's like the street niggas is telling, oh, of course he going to come out of hiding and, and pop his shit. Of course, you know I mean? of course he finna do that. For sure. But why does it have to be acknowledged on the other side? Like, why do people have to give credence to anything he's saying? Why do we give interviews to anybody off the street? Why are we reporting <laughs> on this? It's, just, well, it's the same but, shit. But that's the thing, though. There wouldn't be anything to report on if there wasn't a response. True. You know what I mean? If he wasn't like, because like, like you already know, okay, how many people have threatened six nine? How many people have tried to push his line? And then what winds up happening? Wow! Inevitably, nothing every single time. So if we, if people would just stop acknowledging him, because the worst thing you could do, like he's a clout demon, the more energy you give him, the more stronger he grows. Well, we live at a time now that the more the more most disrespectful you are, usually makes headlines and shit. It's like, oh, I can't believe he said that. And I don't know, I mean, like you said, we shouldn't give any news to it, but here we are. It's not, yeah, and, and like, it becomes news when Got It responds, you know what I mean? Like, first of all, obviously it's deplorable for 6 9 to talk about dead people and throw them in the mix. He's been then, doing that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, 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 this is the same dude that was talking about dead ops of people that weren't his ops, like just random dead rappers and throwing them in the mix and doing all kinds of lame shit like that. But at a certain point, it becomes news because people respond to it. And then when nothing winds up happening, it makes them look bad. So it's, I like, mean, but realistically, we talk about this all the time. The chances of these rappers, these people that are rich, to go out and you see them do some street shit is is slim to none. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to see what's the chances that six nine running to anybody he got beef with. So when I when I I don't expect guys like Got It to be the one to actually do it. But when I hear like, oh okay, like I feel like he's representing all his people. So when he makes that statement, someone in his camp is then. Gonna take that apart. Yeah, but himself. where they gonna where they gonna find them? Exactly. Nothing, that's what yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like but he kind of he kind of trolls people with the whole I walk around without no security, you know, homies around where, me. Where does he be? I don't know, but do you usually spot him out? And then you spot him out, he got security, right? And kinda, nine, nine times out of ten, niggas don't want to go to jail. Ain't nobody really willing to crash out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To prove a point when it comes down to him. So let's keep it real. Like unless you. Catch him in a wild situation, rare situation where he's slipping and you got the upper hand, nothing's gonna happen. It reminds me of remember the takers? Yeah. And well, there's GBO Gaston and what uh -huh. was the, the other guy's name um, that wound up dying? The one that yeah, the one that got killed in Lakewood. Yeah. Those dudes were popping up in people's hoods when nobody was there, when they knew nobody was there, hopping out for 45 seconds, dissing the hood, doing this, like and then bouncing before there's any chance of a repercussion. But you see, know what I mean? the difference is they weren't working with no bag. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They were still local. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. you can't, you you no, doing stuff sure. like that. If somebody know where you live. Somebody's going to spot you out. It's different if you got a fucking, you're a, a multi-millionaire and you could just go city to city, go overseas, talk shit and crazy like. But that's a, that, that's the same type of. You're right. It's harder to get to him. But that's also the same type of shit that Six Nine be doing. Like when he hopped out in the Six O's and f- filmed in front of the Nipsey mural mm-hmm. and all that. Like he did that when he knew nobody was going to be there and all that. Like this situation, not the only thing that he done came out and trolled and said something about neither though. Because of, of course. it's been hella situations where he just came out super duper fucking disrespectful and people mm-hmm. just felt like you know what we got to defend whoever it is that he talking about and everybody started going at him. But, but it's like. Ultimately, we're yelling at the screen. Yes. How you, like Les said, how you handle somebody like that is, you don't give them no attention at all. Well, you yeah. don't stream the music. You don't do anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that money got to keep coming in somehow. Nip said put the goofy niggas on goofy time. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is a dude that literally, the more he gets acknowledged, the bigger he gets. The less we acknowledge him, the less his echo chamber gets, the, the quieter his voice becomes till he inevitably... And eventually fades into obscurity and he's gone. See, I think though, I, I think whether we acknowledge him or not, he's just one of those people who's just a virus. Like he doesn't For give sure. a fuck whether we're talking about him or not. He's gonna continue to troll and continue to talk shit as much as he freaking wants to. Cause I want I feel like these last what, like maybe four months or something, it kind of seemed like he just went under the radar. But there was still videos coming up where he was trolling um uh uh um Durkio. Yep. I mean Perkio, Perkio. Yeah. Right? Yep. Remember it and niggas didn't really give it any attention, but he still was coming out and you know, Charlie, he's just a fucking virus. The thing is, like a lot of people want to make the comparison between gunna snitching and which if gunna snitched or comparing to what six six nine did. Now the difference between gunna and six nine in this situation, obviously they're both rats, right? But what gunna didn't do is bring beef to the set he didn't add to the problems literally six nine was creating <laughs> in t- he's putting money on people's heads having his, his like his homies get into funk and he all was that. doing a lot he was he, asking for the smoke too he's asking for the smoke he's yeah. literally adding to all the shit which inevitably uh, eventually they wind up getting prosecuted for mm-hmm. so that's like the biggest difference gunna wasn't on any of that time now you could say arguably Yes, did gonna benefit from the affiliation of this alleged criminal organization? Sure, he did. It probably raised his profile to a degree, but he wasn't making fools crash out on his behalf. And six nine, the difference between gun and six nine too is six nine was a freaking creative player. Like yeah. that was somebody that they created, put a wig on, put makeup on, and said, "Here, do this," and then you know everybody benefited off of it to some See, extent. Gunner's music was never like street. Not like but that. if you right. know, if you know, you know, in the background, people are like, oh, he's a low. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's why this shit is like, oh, like ah. he would make subtle references <clears throat> to it and all that, but it was never like the primary line he was pushing. Yeah, he was just on some like fly shit, player shit. When I first saw Gunna, I had no idea he was like gangbang affiliated or anything like that. I thought he was just a regular dude, you know, but but then it comes out, yeah. 6ix9ine, he always had that in his music. He he had that image before he was rocking with the Nine Trey Bloods and all that. Like he had oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he had like the image of with the with the hair and, He was pushing know, that line. He was yeah. getting them tattoos. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was doing, really? He was yeah. doing all that shit. So is he really from there? No. No. I mean, look, he I think he lived around that area. People seen him getting a little little clout on SoundCloud. That's what it was. He pushing, and then they like, "Hey, come on!" Then like he was rapping about a lifestyle he wasn't living. But yeah, like he was rapping about like like up in the pole. He had a song called "Poles" with mm-hmm. Trippy Red and shit. Like, and, and but the thing also is to 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 make it further clear that he wasn't really jacking that blood shit like that. It's because he used to be around Hoovers before then. And he even says on that song, on that song Gummo, he said like with the Hoovers and the Billies, like he, mm-hmm. he references that, like the fact mm-hmm. that he's around Hoovers And too. I can confirm he had some real Hoovers with him too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some real well, When he was in LA even. For sure. Yeah. When he was, and, and that's what kept him safe. Bro, they took him to the Nickersons. They was, they was taking him to the right places. That's why I feel like too, we like the, 
us as a culture, we have to accept some type of accountability for allowing this person to come over here and perpetrate. But it's not just six nine because this is where we at now. We live at a time, especially in Los Angeles, niggas is broke as fuck. So if somebody comes and they and they got millions and they they looking at it like, oh, this is our opportunity or our window to extort, to you know bring their people in and get deals and do all type of shit. So. Mm-hmm. As long as you got the bag, niggas only honestly they don't even care if you snitching like that. Not everybody, but there's some motherfuckers that look past certain shit 